Let's move straight on. We'll go to Pat, if we have him here. Hey, Pat. How's it going, everybody? Happy to be joining in. Amazing. Thank you so much for joining us, Pat, on this uh, momentous occasion. The 12-hour live stream is back. Uh, appreciate you jumping on for to share with in 20 minutes everything that you're using Wake Up for. So the floor is yours. Please take it away. Awesome. So I will go ahead and I think my screen is shared and yes. we'll, we'll pull that up. But just so I don't forget, because I often do, I'll pull up a slide with some contact info. So you'll have a handle there. The biggest thing to remember is the at phasedu. If you remember that and you put .com after it, you have the website. I'll make sure these resources make it to the website as well. You have my handle there for X or Twitter and also email as well. So anytime you want to or need to reach out, please feel free. I, I like to say that my sessions come with lifetime tech support. So whether you have a question now or a few months from now, please feel free to reach out. I'd love to collaborate and get some things going. But my goal here today is sharing some uses you probably know of Wakelet, but maybe some you haven't, and then also trying to get into some features that kind of blew our teachers away as far as some of those lesser known possible features. But I'll tiptoe you through kind of the layout of how this is set up so that you can kind of choose your own adventure in the resources. The link will come your way in the chat to this entire collection. So you'll have all of that for you. And it starts off here in the first column with multiple different uses that our teachers have used a lot. Then it comes into our next column here and goes into some lesser known features and some things we've still used a lot, but tend to not be those initial things that you might focus a training or something on. Then there is a bonus column of other resources, other ideas to try and get you some things, get your mind going, try and come up with some things you may never have thought of. Then we have some resources for Wakelet and then some people on the Wakelet side of things that I followed off and on. And there's a lot bigger list that will be coming. I'll absolutely be adding to it from this week as well as other people I know. It's kind of just that starting point. I'm sure I'll be adding Amy as I was catching some of that session right before I jumped in. But that is how things are laid out for you. Again, you'll have that link in the chat for you. So you'll have that piece coming in and you'll be able to play with all of these different things. But one of the first things, and this one actually comes from Wakelet themselves, there's this really nice infographic that I share a lot with our teachers just to get those ideas going as far as how you could start using Wakelet. And you can see there's ideas for pre-K all the way through high school out to university on the personal side of things, all the way to using it with staff and colleagues, things like lesson plans and putting field trips together, doing all kinds of different things in this place because Wakelet is so easy to pull all the different resources and things into. It makes it a great place to use for any time you need to curate resources together. Wakelet is a really great place to use. And because it's super easy to use, you can use it with a lot of grade levels and be able to get that information out quickly and easily to people. As we come down from there, and I'll open a couple of these, I will not open them all up, but some uses come from this TCA blog post by Destiny Wagner, and I'll just stop at this top graphic here, but a lot of us have known and thought of Wakelet as a really great place for portfolios. And obviously we think of student portfolios, things like that. I've walked my colleagues through it as well as far as creating portfolios they can use on the professional side of things and those get to know you teacher type activities. Thinking about organizing your professional learning into a collection can be a great way to, again, put everything in one spot. I've encouraged some of our teachers to also put in the communication as far as parent side, link your newsletters and everything into one spot because we don't have teacher websites. So this Wakelet can essentially become their teacher website to point everybody to one spot, get all that information. And you can see a couple others here from substitute plans all the way through different classroom resources. So again, different ideas that our teachers have used a lot that are kind of in that realm of normal uses and things you can do with Wakelet. And as we saw on Nicole's side and on mine, this one is set up to be in that layout as far as columns. But obviously, if we come up to design, we have all the different ideas or layouts from mood board to grid view 
all of these different things you can use. So I try and encourage our teachers to get into those different pieces and use the different formats for what fits the best. If you're doing something that scrolls in a linear order and only needs one big thing, that mood board is a really great place to kind of just scroll down through and keep everything focused in one spot. Another thing that we use a ton throughout and is a great use of Wakelet is to differentiate. And I mean that in ways of giving assignments and ways that students can have choice throughout. And we do that a lot with HyperDocs, choice boards, and playlist. And in this column, you'll see a lot of different things linked in that walk you through how you can do those different things. And if you've never heard of a HyperDoc before, you can click on the different links. Some of them go to blog posts, things like that. Some of them will come to an entire slideshow where you can get an idea in this case of exactly what a HyperDoc is. And you can see that it works through a research-based format to go from everything from an engaged section all the way down to extending. And it is a concept of putting all the links all the way through assessment and everything that you would need in one place. So you might think of it almost as a leveled up web quest, but I do think it's definitely a level up because of the fact that it being research-based and it distinctly has different areas because of the fact of what they add to the lesson for engagement all the way down through that extension piece. And you can easily see how you could build these headers into Wakelet with text if you wanted to. You could have each one of these sections be a separate Wakelet that links to each other. You have a bunch of different ways you could level that up or kind of make that happen. Same thing with choice boards. As we think about digital portfolios, resumes, all of these things are in this first column. And each one of them is going to have different links that you can click on that'll give you, how do I actually make this thing happen? If I'm going to do a sub plan, for instance, and I want to make it in Wakelet, how do I make sure that that sub plan is accessible by the sub and they don't have to log in or they don't have to have something, I don't need to know their email address first, things like that. All of these links will walk you over to a blog post or a resource that'll step you down through exactly what you would need to make that happen. And it's really nice place for the sub plans because again, you can just share it as anybody with a link, make sure they have that link. And then they have all of their resources in one spot, including links to how do they submit attendance if they're gonna do that? How do they do a lunch count if they're doing that piece? And again, f finishing out that column here, you can come all the way down through and including using Wakelet for research, which obviously a lot of us can easily relate to it being a great place for that. One thing that we've done to kind of level up that piece is actually have students go into something like a column layout or even use a different Wakelet for different sections of the paper. And what I mean is this column would be introduction paragraph. This would be paragraph two paragraph three, paragraph four, so on down the line, so that each one of their resources is nicely curated by the section of the paper it's going to go into. And then down below, they obviously can bring in the text and put headers in for why they're including this, citation information, all of those different things, and including uploading the PDF so that they have a copy of that study right in their column of research. And if I come to my, my overall apps as well, we could jump into here and link in YouTube videos that we could watch right in here instead of having to jump out. We can connect to our Google Drive, all of those different pieces, making it so we're not just curating resources into one place, but carefully organizing it so our research is very then then very easily driving our paper writing as well and helping them practice that organization and those digital citizenship skills of pulling those resources, those citations into one spot as they go through. So hopefully you might've gotten an idea or two there of some ways that you haven't maybe used Wakelet or maybe the depth of which you've used it. And now we're gonna switch into kind of going a little bit further as far as what you can do that's maybe a next level use or a little bit more kind of into it than what those past ones were. And I'll, I'll scroll down here a little bit and just open a couple of the pieces that I think have impacted our teachers the most. One of them is as simple as, and I touched on it briefly before, is using Wakelet to embed YouTube videos 
and then have it remove all the different advertisements. And I know that's a very simple thing, but depending on what level you're at, and some would argue it's a, at any level of school, the different advertisements and things that can pop up can derail almost an entire lesson sometimes. So just by going to your icon, your app icon and embedding that, you can see I can easily then play my YouTube video right within the collection without having to go out anywhere. All I have to do is click back off of it. I'm right back in the Wakelet. If this was my hyperdoc and I'm teaching from it, my students never have to leave the place I want them in. All their resources are in one spot. And again, without those distractions that would come in with that YouTube video, any advertisements. Another piece that our teachers have liked a ton, sometimes you just, you have to incorporate text. There's not a great way to embed a file or something, but text is sometimes just the best way to get it in. But some of our students need that help to scaffold that process for them, help them read it a little bit. And that's where the immersive reader function comes in with some of these bigger text boxes. We can go to immersive reader through our three dot menu. Once we pull that up, our screen will refresh to what you're used to if you've used immersive reader and any of the other apps that it's built into or by itself in the browser. But you can see I now have this screen New where I can releases. click and have it read and have it highlight each word for me. I can change my voice, change the speed. And then some of the most powerful pieces come in in the top right here where I can change what the text looks like. I can change the way that it looks on the page to be a little easier on the eyes. I can increase or decrease line spacing. I can highlight different parts of speech. And I can even come to the reading preferences and say that I really just want to see a line at a time. And I also really need to have this change to a different language. For a student that just came in, we need to have it translated. And we can go ahead and say that we want the whole document to translate. And Maya then within a few seconds, it's reading it. If I need to toggle back for other students, the original, just hit it at the top. I'm right back into that normal format. So again, just a couple things that maybe you haven't dove into one of those um, menus to see some of those added pieces, but things that have really helped some of our teachers and students get into things. Another piece that we have used to create essentially eBooks, and we normally use the mood board format for it, is the ability to export an entire collection as a PDF. So we'd have the students design their different graphics, put the different elements in, and have all the information in. And then they would simply come up to our three dots up here in the top right, do export as a PDF, and walk through that process, let it download, let it finish the whole thing, and then you have a scrollable PDF with links and things that work that essentially makes you an ebook really quickly, really easily, but allows this interface to do a lot of that work in different pieces that you wouldn't have as easily in other platforms. And as we continue through the last few things here, I'm just gonna scroll through some of these lists and hopefully shout out some ideas that you might not have thought of. One of them is creating different interactive infographics within the world of Wakelet and including things like you can see here in this TCA blog post, an idea of creating things like including math information and actually having people interact with the Wakelet because of course we can share it. We could have people be able to make copies. You can embed different activities in it and thinking about those different things like the Unsplash integration and things where you can bring in images. And also if you haven't caught it yet, one of those new upgrades is the ability to go ahead and change your cover image and actually use image generation. So that's gonna add a completely new element in when students are doing creative writing, maybe they're writing that ebook, doing a historical narrative, they can now come in and we'll just, not that this would be a historical narrative prompt, but we'll just copy the sample prompt that's there. We can tell it to go ahead and generate the images and now we have an image that corresponds exactly to our story, exactly to our curation, our research, whatever we're doing. And of course, if we come down to just the image section within the Wakelet itself, we also have that generate image there, as well as the awesome integration to Canva to directly design with Canva within the atmosphere of Wakelet. 
again, trying to think of ways that we can keep our students in that focus spot without them jumping around, having to follow links and open other pages, because we know once they get a bunch of different tabs open, inevitably we might lose them, but one of those tabs might also become a game site before too long. One of the last things I'll mention here in this column is thinking about using the different integrations, and this is a little outdated. There's definitely more now, and we'll see if it loads up for me, but all of the different things that really nicely link or completely integrate into Wakelet. Obviously, we talked about YouTube. We have things like Adobe Express, Google Things link in super nicely, Google Classroom, different websites. So think about all those different things you might use that you can really easily bring into Wakelet to make it that one-stop shop. And in case you didn't pick up anything new up to this point, there are a few other things listed throughout this column, including using it as a place to house your podcast, because you could put an embedded place there for people to be able to add comments and different things and list all your episodes, things like using spaces and curating a virtual field trip into Wakelet. So again, it's not just a passive receipt of information, but they're actively using it to explore and hopefully interacting with those concepts as well. In the next column over in that bonus idea section, you can also jump into this slide deck, which will link you into the magic beneath the surface of EdTech. And if you jump to slide 15, you have all of these other different resources, including things like making mystery wakelets or digital breakouts with wakelet and all of these different ideas that are again, not only using it in a little bit different way, but also trying to use it to its fullest extent. So you're not moving on or jumping to another tool before you really know all of these ins and outs and all of the great things that you can build in and run through Wakelet. And you can see as we come down through these different resources, you have tons of other samples and different things here that come from other people. And if you didn't catch the update, if you haven't checked out Explore recently in your sidebar, usually the second thing down under search, this Explore is completely revamped, so it can help you not only find things by subject, but can also jump you into looking at portfolios and different templates that you can use and jumping through custom curated list by Wakelet of different topics, different sources. So again, you can see why well, use it this way, but how has this other person done something for digital math tools? Or how has somebody else done something for the hours of code? start to curate those resources and also see how they might have used it or done it in a different way. And the last thing that I will share here at the end of my time is definitely keep in the back of your mind to go back and check the Wakelet blog frequently because you're not only going to have things that come directly out of things like Community Week as we see here at the top, but you're also going to see different features and different Wakelet ambassadors publishing tips and tricks that again, show you different things like, how do I really easily embed something? But also, did you know that you can go into the menu in a Wakelet and you can actually remove the embed? And that makes it so it's just a link and it'll open in a new tab if you do wanna take them to a different site versus them not being in, able to interact with it there. That really comes into play mostly with something like a Canva creation where you want them to be able to jump into Canva and work with it right away. But you can see tons of different great blog posts and things here. And if I come to the top, I also have a full section of training resources, again, that can help you find content, but also help you do different things that are going to let you find how other people are using it. And then you can share it out, pay it forward, and show them the amazing ways you're using Wakelet too, both on the professional side and with your students to help them level up but I think that is about my time. Hopefully, again, I've given you some things that you didn't know, maybe presented some resources that you maybe knew of, but hadn't used quite in that way or gone to that level. And I would love to collaborate at any time. So please feel free to snag the link out of the chat. That'll give you not only this, you can come to my portfolio and you can remember that I can be found at phusedu. So remember that contact info. And again, reach out anytime, whether it's now or even a year from now, I should still have the same handles. I would love to connect and do some collaboration. 
But I thank you sincerely for your time, for joining in. And James, did you see any questions, anything coming in that I can help with? Uh, first of all, Pat, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, yeah, not not too much in the way of questions. Again, more comments. We always get people absolutely agreeing with you. Uh, Priscilla was saying, yeah, she also says it's a, a one-stop shop. Uh, and mm -hmm. she's up next. They'll be sharing exactly the same uh, sort of idea. Um, but I just wanted to say, Pat, I, I like that you focused on the, the, the lesser known features and, and uses of Wakelet because uh, even myself watching, and I, I use Wakelet every day and I show people Wakelet every day and I don't show them as much as I probably should in terms of those smaller features like export PDF, um, remove embed, which is a new one, even the YouTube um, embed, removing those ads. I think they're all very important and I think depending on the, the use, that that one small use we call it could mm -hmm. mean a lot to that teacher. So I, I thank you a lot for sharing those. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure you'll get a lot of questions after this, and we popped your handle in the chat, so you'll have a lot of uh, people reaching out to you. But again, Pat, thank you so so much. Um, is there anything else you want to say to uh, people watching? Not at all. Just thank you guys again for joining. Keep that collaboration going. Capture all those handles you can. To follow people and keep it going from here. Amazing. Pat, thank you so, so much for joining us. Cheers. Thank you. See you later. Bye-bye.